Okay, we're starting this again. And I'm just going to keep it very simple because I could go on forever talking about the subject, right? Um, but we're here to discuss my father's... Um, uh, powers, right? And why is it that... Um, and how is it that we don't understand the power of my father? I feel that none of us understand the power of our father. Of our father. Why? Because um, we're not giving him no credit. Um, and and that's really sad. Okay, first and foremost, our father, um, in Genesis, it says it very clearly, right? Our father spoke things into creation. Everything. create. He spoke creation into creation. Um, and therefore we know that the power that my father has is through speaking, right? He literally speaks things into creation. Okay. So we also know that our father is omnipresent. He's everywhere. Omnipotent. He's all powerful. Omniscious. He knows it all. Right. So that's the three things. So now I really want you to look outside and look at all that he has created to its perfection. Because we are also created to his perfection, you know. And um, we're amazing creatures, right? Our, I don't care what Fauci <laughs> And all his minions and everybody has to say about natural immunity. There's nothing like natural immunity, right? Because our father literally has created us that we could fight off anything and everything that's naturally it of this world that could attack us. But but unfortunately, most of the things that do attack us is not of this world. Okay, is created by man or um, in Created by man, right? Some laugh somewhere. You know, they dabble with our foods. They dabble with our water forever and a day, fluoride. Um, they tell us poison is good for you. You know, we have a real serious enemy. And he wants our destruction. Period. And what they've been trying to do is exterminate us. If no one has said that, I really... If we're at the end of times, let it be. I have no shame on what I have to say. But anyway, so let's talk about my father's power. Because once you understand that power, it's just amazing. Um... But with all this that he has, and he's so amazing, right? He's so gracious to his children. And the reason why I say this is because the way I've been treated. Now, I am, I'm up there in age. Um, and um, I've been a sinner. Um, I haven't lived a perfect life. Not to the degree that my father has taken care of me. You know, if you take a look through my life, um, all the blessings that I've had is just amazing compared to the choices that I've made. But my father has been so um how can I say he's been so forgiving, loving, caring, concerned, and um man. If it wasn't because of him, man, I would have never been here. The devil has done so much in my life to destroy it. I mean, I've been living with, I've been having to deal with spiritual warfare all my life. Um, I guess because of where I'm at right now, and now I understand. Um, but I didn't back then. And all I know is that I never looked at it as him attacking me. I just looked at it as that's the lesson that I'm being thrown. I mean, um, 
how could you know what's really wrong unless someone tells you, yo, this is wrong, you know? Um, yeah. But I don't want anyone to feel sorry for me because I've been blessed. Like, I've been through struggles, but never like that. I've always been the fortunate one to be blessed by God and see it, right? Um, even though I've had so much tribulation from abandonment, I mean, so much things that went through. But it was smooth sailing for me because God was always with me. You know, I have to point that out because um, there's a lot. God is calling out his lost ones. I know we've had that conversation because this is one of the things that I always used to. The more I used to learn about how the devil works and how um, how um, brainwash and program our people. Um, I always asked, I was like, well, God, you're not really giving um, hum you know, us humans a chance because that this, this, um, this devil is so cruel that he really, you know, he does a number on these people, right? People are really blinded right now. Um, how is the, you know, like I used to try to interface, I don't know what I used to try to do these conversations. I know he did bring that up to me when he gave me my sin. He was like, well, you asked for it in some way or another. <laughs> he was like, you know, I would speak on behalf of the people. Well, how are they going to know if they've been blinded all this time? You know, how are they going to come back this? And so here's my answer. we got to prepare. You know, we got to um, cleanse that those energies out of us. We got to cleanse our, you know, it's like, you know, I'm Spanish, right? So it's like when it's springtime cleaning, you know, in a Spanish household. I mean, I'm from back in the days, right? That's when um grandma used to take out the buckets, toothbrushes. We are cleaning out tiles and the grits and the nits and all corners and um, taking out the bleach and doing that dusting that's been there, like, you know, we're cleaning every blind, we're cleaning every curtain, every crevice, every corner. Yeah, we need to clean our earth like that um, and ourselves. And that starts with ourselves, mm -hmm. our families, our households. We got to prepare. Whatever it's coming, it's a spiritual thing. And we know this because we turn on the television and there's a lot of different warfare out there. Okay, so back to my father's great and loving, caring, amazing energy that he created everything, right? Because the same way he created everything in the world, he also is part of the dark creation, right? And in him, he has both, right? Even though he's light and love, he still created darkness. That means, therefore, he knows what darkness is, right? Because he he created our, our um, enemy. Without, I mean, you know, I'm not God. I, I don't know all the stuff that has gone up there. And those are, I'm very interested in so many things. But don't think that I would know all of that that's going up up there and how that, that happened. Um, the few good studies that I've gotten have been from Michael Heist, um, which is more of a Bible scholar. And he has a theory that I, I think is a theory because I don't know if he could prove it, even though I've heard his lectures stating that, um, you know, just listen, go see his works, because I don't even want to speak on that. Um, but it's very interesting. Um, so God's great power. So he created all. So therefore, we know, we know from Revelation, the book of Revelation, that all of this is done. It's just a matter of uh, casting. Um, we won the battle, right? It's just a matter of the dynamics playing out, okay? Um, so anyone that is familiar with 
God in itself shouldn't be at all at this time. I'm scared because we know we're protected, right? We should all know that. And if whoever doesn't, that's why I feel like I'm being called out. Um, and I want to start prayer sessions. I mean, not, I, I have started my prayer sessions. Those are going to be until God says. I mean, seven in the morning, seven at night, live, daily, until it's told to me otherwise. Because one thing I've learned with my father, you must obey. You know, at least I want to obey because I fear no man, but I fear my my father. <laughs> he could take away your life like he gives you life. So, yeah, I fear my father. But anyway, um, so that's why this prayer is important for, for you to know, memorize, and get it down pat. And not only that, but... When you work with God, you understand that it's a stir that you're making. So whatever I'm stirring up, it's happening in the spiritual world, um, realm. And then um, it would manifest itself in the world. I'm not sure how those dynamics work. And there's certain things I don't... I've had so much experiences with, with that side that there's certain things I do not question because I don't want to know the I've, I totally, I would advise anyone just believe in God, Jesus, the power of Jesus, and don't be even curious because he gives you as God's children, this ultimate blindness power. That's why I said in one of my videos, the beauty of being blind, of, of God blinding you to the ugliness of this world and the way he protects you and the innocence behind that, appreciate that because it is not spoken of enough. And that's where you see my father's glory. He loves his children so much that we don't have to deal with that. And the only reason why I feel like we have to deal with that now is because we've allowed evil again. We've allowed evil to encroach our land. And since we didn't stop it and check it in time, it's going to play out ugly if we don't start checking ourselves now. You know? So there should be a cleansing of people. A cleansing of the land. And our father is giving us the tools. <clears throat> to do it. Yeah. So. And what is our authority against these. Um, these evil beings. Well we have a lot of authority. Um, not us particularly. And the only reason why we have it is because. It's through Jesus Christ. Always remember that, right? Because he's all power. You know, that's where the power comes from. And we're his children. And he loves us. So he gives us authority. Like he gave um, Adam all authority over the king. Over everything. Over all animals. All. That authority stands. Period. Now you have to know your authority. And the only way you can know your authority is if you get close to your father. The only way you can exercise that authority is if you get close to your father. See how that works? So, um, yeah. But it's, I have to, I have to shed so much love on my father right now because I don't feel that the, the church the way it is now, they do, they really express who they, I don't even think they know him, you know, because I just don't see it. I, I listen to lectures and I'm like, if it's not Derek Prince, um, well, there's a lot of older sermons that I could speak on that are just amazing. Like, but these sermons that I found are like 
anything from 75 to 80 years old. You know, um, sermons that I've had to read from excellent preachers back then that they spoke about. All they spoke about was spiritual warfare and how to keep it in check. And it had to be kept in check. And they knew better. It was not to be allowed to roam about because it just it's it gets like an infestation like we have now you have people you have young men killing each other you know no sense of law no sense of humanity no sense of empathy no sense of people don't people see other people laying in the street they don't do nothing people see people hungry people see people cold and they won't feed them. They find it funny when you feed them. That's happened to me a thousand times. They look at me like, what is wrong with you? And I look at them like, what is wrong with you? Not to see there's something wrong with this scenario. And if you could do, but the, I mean, do something. You know, um, this world is cold right now. And it's going to get colder. Um, and it's not fair because this is where I get upset. There's been a lot of polls that are coming out now on YouTube. And um, and I'm glad for everybody that puts those polls. I actually love them, to tell you the truth. Especially if I see Jesus, God, or whatever. I know. I'm a voter, of course, for God or Jesus. And it's so funny because 96 six percent of the people are doing such so even atheists even atheists my people because here we, here here we are here we are um i know I, i've spoken to many atheists because i'm always curious how do you not love your father i'm always curious at that but they're always the nicest sweetest people and even though they might be atheists they don't understand that world because they haven't been introduced to it they know how to be civil to one another. They um, believe in the law of, of not harming each other. They believe in being compassionate. And so they're good and more. Be I wanted to say 90% of the people in this world um, are good. The ones that are children of God, because I've had to learn the hard way that there is children that are God, that are among amongst us, and I guess that comes from the parable, the wheat and the tares. Um, yes, they are, and it took me a long time to understand that. You know, they are children that are not of God. You know. But, um, yeah, I don't want to take this um, video too long. It's 18 minutes, and I already hear the chatter like, don't go over. Um, I hope I was able to express a little bit about how, what powers that um, we're able to exercise and, um, and of course, later on, if I get questions, um, I will respond to them and how we could use these powers to be able to um, help us right now in this situation that we're in. Um, I also do know that there's so much um, fear mongering going on and our I have to repeat, you know, our father is not a, a father of confusion. And he he tells us, fear not, for I'm with you. Fear not, for I'm with you, right? Um, but he also prepares us. And so please join me. Please share. Um, speak to God. Try to get close to God. And if you don't know him, I know that I'm going to have an audience. I just hope that it starts soon because I'm just like, I'm getting amped. Like I'm talking about things that I haven't spoken about so long, my experiences. Oh my God. 
I want to share this and I want to be able to engage. I want to hear your experiences because what I don't know, you could teach me, which, you know, we could teach each other. That's the whole point, you know, and I, I believe all churches are supposed to be like that. I don't believe that there's no minister that's supposed to be, of course, there's supposed to be a minister to teach you his experiences and stuff, but everybody has a piece of ministry to teach, right? Because we all have a, a certain knowledge of God that each of us don't have, which is each of us is experiencing, right? Um, I believe that God is bringing up a whole different way of looking at him. And I also see, I know, I don't know how it's going to happen. I just know that his children are going to get together and the lost are going to be found. I know that. I know that. Say that with all power. I know that. So I am excited. I get excited. And um, this is a good time. Let's stop the fear mongering. All right? Um, this war is won. And know who's your enemy. Your enemy could be spoken out. Know your power. Know your authority. They have no authority over us, man. Since Genesis. Nothing has changed. So let's speak on it. Let's speak about the elephant in the room. Let's let's have this prayer, you know, and share this prayer and bring and and I, I would love to see all the doñas in every street corner and, and all the thugs with their Bibles and speaking and putting on their armor, you know, and, and knowing the words of God. Yes, yes, he loves us all. He loves his children. There's nothing you could do. He'll speak to you. There's nothing you could do. And just remember, every sin is like um, this. How can I say? We're all sinners, right? So it's just, it's your heart. And he knows we repent. We do errors. We're human. So this is the time. This is the time. So. It's 22.20. I am cutting this video. Everybody have a blessed evening. Thank you so much for listening. If you did stop by, I hope to see you in prayer. If not, please stop in my channel. Copy the prayer. You can say the prayer at 7 o'clock in the morning whenever you want. If you want, you could join us. If not, 7 o'clock at night, 7 o'clock in the morning, there is a purpose for it to be done on a timely basis. Okay? Um, and share. And if you could translate it, it will be highly um, appreciated. Um, the verses are very clear. Um, and there's just a little section that he wants to implement. Um, and may God be with us all. Amen. Have a good one. Bye. Bendición.